Hey guys, so um, we did an extra indie lab just because, and well, yeah, there were other indies, but uh, we wanted to focus on uh, sort of terminal velocity and the drag force. So uh, that wasn't quite complicated enough, and Doc was like, oh, you should do something extra. So we decided to look into the little fins on the back of trucks and sort of what they do and how they work, and specifically uh, what angle they work best at. I'm Benjamin Robert Mangelstorff, and we'll move on now. Uh, you want to talk about this? Yeah, yeah. So this is just sort of a, a rundown on drag and uh, turbulence. You can sort of see on the right there, we have a picture of all the different shapes Wikipedia has uh, for easy access. That's just some like basic drag stuff. Uh, the drag force depends a lot on the cross-sectional area that's moving through a fluid and the shape of that with turbulence. So that's a really cool thing to look at. We didn't use that super in-depth, but um, we decided that trucks were cubes. That kind of matters. Um, and then here on the left, you can sort of see some examples of what truck fins do. Uh, the top picture is a truck without fins, and you can see that when it moves through the air, it swirls around behind it in this like sort of chaotic mess, and that pulls back on the truck a little bit, I think. So when you add truck fins, though, it streamlines, streamlines the process, and you can sort of see the little tail it gets, so it all goes past the truck without much incident, and that makes the trucks driving more efficient. So that's what truck fins do. Uh, yeah, so basically the purpose of our lab was to find what the optimal angle for the fins on the back of a truck would be. Um, and we would hypothesize that it would be around 60 degrees just because we've seen trucks moving before. Yes? Can you define the angle with a sketch, please? Oh, yeah. Can we go back a slide? So... You can see in this picture, I don't know actually if you can see it or not, but here's the fin, here's the truck, and then it does that, and this angle here is the angle we're talking about. Uh, yeah, so we were looking into what the optimal degree to have the fins would be at. Um, we hypothesized it would be around 60 degrees because we've seen trucks before and it kind of looked like it was around that. Um, and so we took data by, we created uh, like this cardboard box where it had a base and then four like flat fins sticking out of it, sort of like the back of a truck. And we went to the stairwell over there and uh, like put it through fishing wire that was connected to the ground to keep it moving in a straight line. And we would drop it, it would move along the fishing wire, fall down until it hit the ground, and we would take video of it with our iPhones and uh, do video analysis. And then we would ultimately do three trials each time changing the angles 30, 60, 90, to kind of determine what the best range of values for the angle of a drop thing would be. Mm -hmm. And that's just sort of a picture of what we did. You can see in the left picture, right picture on the left, that's sort of what our apparatus looked like. It was really just a pyramid with the top cut off. It's very simple design. And then um, over here you can see that we had to like stick our arms through the bars on the stairwell because our strings weren't long enough. It was really painful. Pain. Yeah, it was actually quite painful. Um, um, that shows the video analysis that we were doing, and here is an example of the videos that we took. So you can kind of see that we just dropped it, and uh, it wasn't anything too fancy. The wires were a bit of a pain. But, uh, this is sort of the data we got, and I want to explain the graph on the right. It's a graph of y velocity versus time, and when something reaches normal velocity, what? <laughs> it's your guys' left. I'm so sorry. My right, your left. Um, the graph on the left, every time I've said right, uh, change it to left, is... Um, so, when you have a terminal velocity, it means the box isn't accelerating anymore, which means the um, slope of the velocity graph is going to be zero. Uh, sadly, since we didn't use one of those fancy motion sensors, we had to do data points, and it meant that our thing was a little wiggly at the bottom, so it's not like a perfectly straight line down. So what we did was we took um, a linear fit of the data and we just selected as much of it could so that the line would be as flat as it could be. That was a bit of error for us because it obviously isn't a flat line. You can see that it has a negative slope there, but we did our best. And then we took a mean of those values to get the average terminal velocity. Um, this is a y position versus time graph. You can sort of see that it's curvy and then it gets pretty straight. These are for the same one, and you can see that at about 1.4 seconds, a little before, it starts to get pretty linear. So that's sort of where we were coming with that. 
Um, these are our angles and our terminal velocities at the bottom there. Uh, you can see that they're all around three or four. So that's pretty interesting. And then you can also see that at 60, there's a max in our data, which means that it kind of does that sort of shape, which we'll uh, see later in another graph. Uh, yeah, so basically we took the, we graphed um, the terminal velocity versus the angle, and uh, clearly whenever you have three points, you can put it onto a quadratic uh, curve, but we figured that it worked pretty well the way that our data was, and when we did the curve, we could kind of extrapolate from that what the most efficient angle would be, or the angle that would give the highest terminal velocity. Yeah, and so we graphed um, that logger pro fit, gives us the three values. It gives us an A and X, or sorry, an A and B and a C for Y equals AX squared uh, plus BX minus, C, or plus C, and our C was a negative number, so we had a minus. And so we graphed that function in our TI-84s, and it gave us a maximum of 62.943 degrees, which was our X, at a terminal velocity of 4.957 meters per second, which is about 5 and 63. So, um, that was pretty cool. We got pretty close with our guests to our data, so that was nice to see. Then we did some error calculations. Uh, yeah, so to do the error calculations, we wanted to find an accepted value for the angle of the truck fin, but from all of our research, we couldn't really find one like angle that was suggested to be the most optimal on the internet. Um, but we did analyze this picture, and we were able to find the angle that it showed the truck fin being at, and since we assumed this was a demonstration of the truck fins that are actually used, that the science would have found the most optimal angle already, and that would be what is in use. So from this, we were able to find that the accepted value would be around 76 degrees, and then because ours was 63, uh, it wasn't that far off, we got an error of 17%. So we are pretty happy with that. And just to clear that up, we did a little trick to find the angle. It wasn't any like protractor measuring, because we didn't have one of those. But yeah. <clears throat> so um, 60 degrees was our guess. 63 is what our data told us, 76 was it, is what yeah. the uh, internet said, and we said, you yeah, know, those numbers are all pretty close, we did a, an all right job. So we concluded, essentially, that we were successful with our guess, it's around 60 degrees. Um, that comes from our graph, our little parabola. Um, we would have liked to have more data points on that graph, but it actually took us, what, two and a half hours to get three? And it was really painful to get them all it because they were set up. It yeah. like, hurt a lot. So we decided that, that was enough for now. Um, we should try and find a better way to do it, uh, just in, like considering the future. Uh, definitely find a more rigid, more visible string that doesn't get tangled as much. We were thinking like a type of wire using a motion sensor and making it long enough that we didn't have to stick our arms through the bars because that, that kind of sucked. Yeah, and basically the goal would be just to make it more efficient so that we could get more data and make sure that it was more accurate. Also, just a better design for the box because the fins were really hard to reposition. You had to like use tape and stuff. And, like keeping the weight the same was kind of hard. So yeah, that's what we did. Thanks, questions? Yeah, go on. Um, why did you put a parabolic fit? Like, how did you choose that? So we knew that what we were going for was an optimization, and we could see in our data that it had, um, it was a low point, a higher point, and then a lower point. So we assumed that since we were trying to optimize something that would have a max, a quadratic fit would be the one that was best for us. It obviously wasn't going to be linear, because there is an angle where it's going to be the best. Um, so that's sort of why we decided on that. That combined with the fact that we could sort of see a quadratic nature of our data, so that was why. If we had had more data points, it would have been better because we would have been able to see the shape of the graph. Because as Ben said, any three points that are in a function can be put into a quadratic equation. So, so to continue along that question, um, can you think about what it would look like if you had to graph from 0 to 90? And could you sketch that on the board? Uh, like if you had more data. But you, you kind of, I think, already have an idea of what it might look like. Yeah. And you agree, of course, the parabola fails eventually, right? Yeah, so 0 to 90 is the range, and I'm pretty sure it would end up looking a little like that, where it doesn't quite get all the way down. 
But that's sort of the trend we saw with our data. Oh, okay. So it, you, you do imagine it feels very uh, parabolic then. Yeah. That's interesting. That's, that's sort of how it looked to us. And it makes sense because there is going to be one angle up here that is the most efficient, and angles close to that are going to be less efficient, but only slightly, and angles far away from that are going to be pretty inefficient. And there is going to be a baseline that is a terminal velocity that's not zero, and we saw that at 90 degrees it wasn't pretty far down, and that it sort of like sloped. So like 30 was down here, and 90 was like up here, and 60 was like there. Like Fascinating. There. Um, 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 more questions from the audience? I have a few questions as well. There's another function that you guys haven't looked at much. It's called a Gaussian that that does this kind of uh, bell curving stuff. That might be there might be a modified Gaussian on there. Something to think about. Um, another thing is uh, what about not having the fins? Were you able to test just like cut off the flaps? Cut off the flaps? All right, because like you're saying the uh, what's the best angle for the fins? That presumes that you want to have the fins, right? Yeah. So we thought about that, and um, it was after our 30 degree trial. It was like 4.30, we were afraid of getting kicked out by the janitors, and we were like, we could either cut the fins off and do another run, or go home and save ourselves some pain. <laughs> so we definitely thought about doing it with a zero degree angle without fins. We would have to keep the weight the same, which um, we'd have to like mess some things around, take the fins back on top of the box. Um, so we thought about that. We definitely were considering it. Um, I think we were able to conclude from research that it would absolutely be more efficient just to have the fins just from what our research told us. It like significantly decreases how much gas the trucks use if they have the fins. So while we didn't take the data experimentally, we were pretty confident that uh, the fins were more efficient. Because why spend $2,000 on fancy truck fins if they don't do anything? Is that how much they cost? Yeah, it's yeah. like $2,200. That's why really not all expensive. trucks have them, just because... Unless you're going like a very long distance, it won't save you money. Yeah. But if you are going a long distance, it will. Yeah. How's this one? Yes, I have a question. Yeah. All right. How do you think the width of the truck versus the width of the box impacted your results? Uh, can you say that again? Okay, so the truck's a lot wider than your box, right? You've seen trucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> And your box was smaller, right? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the same shape. Do, interesting. The same shape. But do you think that it scales? That even if a box were like the size of a matchbox or something, that you would still want the same angle? Do you think the angle might depend on the width of the box? What about the length of the flaps? Can you speak to the fact that you didn't have an actual truck that you were dropping in the stairwell? Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was about to say that. Um, the terminal velocity, which is what we use to measure efficiency, uh, because we didn't have a truck, we couldn't like do miles per gallon with and without the fins. That would be absurdly expensive and absurd roads. Uh, the janitors would definitely kick you out. Also. Yeah, they'd be really mad. Uh, um, so the equation for terminal velocity is the square root of 2 times the mass of the falling object times the acceleration of gravity divided by the density of the fluid it's moving through times the cross-sectional area times some drag coefficient, which is dependent on the shape of the object. So we said our shape was a cube. It wasn't quite a cube, but it was like a square moving through the air. So we said that that was pretty good. And um, I think the cross-sectional area is the thing that scales it the best because there is that term in the denominator. So if you have a smaller area, it's going to be bigger and it's going to be different. So I think it would scale. Um, the only thing I would worry about is that on trucks, the fins might be shorter than that. So that we might have gotten the proportions a little wrong, but... Just because it takes into account mass uh, and area, is what you're saying? Yeah, I, I think it would scale pretty well. And like, obviously it wouldn't be perfect because trucks aren't like this big and made of cardboard. So there'd be a difference, but with within the realm of 17% error, which is what we got, it's not too bad, but like there's a lot of wiggle room in there, and I think that the angle is somewhere in that 17% range, definitely. It's not going to be 30 degrees, which is sort of what we're looking at. So we weren't able to like find the perfect angle for every situation, but um, that range was really important. And I love that uh, you took a situation that's obviously intractable experimentally and managed to tell us some things about it. I don't mean to disparage that at all. It's an excellent <coughs> technique. But another thing that's on my mind is <coughs> uh, drag is an explicitly nonlinear force. 
right? And so you're working with speeds that were several meters per second, but the truck is going many meters per second. Can you speak about that a bit? I don't know, sir. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so it would have been nice if we had been able to test a whole bunch of different speeds. That's, it was a little bit outside of our ability with this lab. Uh, I don't know how we could have made the box go way, way, way faster. How could you make the box go way faster, Ben? I don't think so! Didn't you reach terminal velocity? Isn't that an essential tenet of your argument? Could you just make it way... Uh, well, first of all, we could have put wheels on the box. And, wheels uh, on the box. Maybe a rocket on the box. <laughs> and had it shoot along the road real quick. Box rockets, yeah. Uh, we could have made the box real, real heavy. There we go. Also. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, guys. A lot of fun.